This is one of my first sermons at Southeast Christian Church. There were two church planting organizations at the time, and they were planting Christian churches around Colorado. And our pastor was a member of the Front Range Evangelizers, and he asked us if we'd be interested in starting a church in Southeast Denver. We started meeting with uh, these two church planning organizations as early as 1971, about a year before Russ came. So we said, what would we have to do? And one was they would like to have 10 uh, core members to the 10 families in the core member group. We wanted somebody that would be peppy and speed up. <laughs> and so by spring, we were running out of ideas on the pastors and Cheryl and Larry drove our family up to Julesburg one Sunday and we went to hear them and he spoke well and we went to lunch afterward. And so we were telling them how that we all were people starting our careers and working 60 hour weeks and um, how did they feel about that? And then volunteering beside that. And they felt like they wanted to be a part of that. And we said, are you sure? <laughs> they were dedicated families. They were good families. And, and so that made us feel more comfortable about coming. And they seemed to, we seemed to gel. We seemed to fit, okay, together. Everybody liked them. Their personality was just a fit for our group. So we came. And we started in that school. We had 25 the first service at the, uh, the School of Theology. So that was where we first met. And uh, that was in 1972 in the summer. And so we had children, and we had adults, and we had some, even some senior citizens. So that began the Southeast Christian Church. And we were there for about three months until we found a school in uh, Walnut Hills. And as we met in that school, we had some opportunities. We had our first Vacation Bible School. A lot of kids came to Vacation Bible School that year, and that did reach out into the community. The parents came to the closing uh, program, and some of them came to church after that. Now, we were in the school for two and a half years. And uh, in, during that time, we were searching for land. And we found, I think it was 32 acres or 35 acres, and that we were able to buy at Dayton and Cayley. And so then we began the process of building a building and uh, having a church location. As the building, we found the property and we had a big sign on the property that said future home of Southeast Christian Church. And then that building was this good tool. Buildings are a tool. Some people think you shouldn't spend money on a building, but you should because uh, the building attracts people. It got exciting as soon as we started, uh, uh, well, we went from chairs to pews. That's a big deal right there. Anytime you start to grow and uh, more people show up and you have more activities, we had, a, had to put on a new annex and uh, a new worship center. And it was, you know, it got, uh, you know, everybody busy and working hard. We had plenty of church activities in terms of uh, uh, dinners, uh, potluck dinners, um, picnics, picnics, and uh, other extra church activities as well as uh, <clears throat> revivals. I mean, there were a lot going on at church at that point in time. A small church is 
It is fun in the fact that you're involved with everything and, and you feel like you know everybody. Uh, but as the church has grown, uh, you know, your friendship circles widen, so many more opportunities. You know, we were raising a family during all of this time. Uh, kids are all grown now, but um, so our, our three children were raised in the church. There are a number of ministries that have taken place over, this, over the years by different people. People are the, the key of why ministries move. Selling the old property on uh, South Dayton Street was no picnic, believe me. You well, know. we really had to start by getting enough people to make the move and to have the momentum to make the move. You know, when we joined the church, there's about a hundred people. And so, you know, obviously the church had to really grow. Um, and, you know, you had to grow, you had to develop your leadership and your, your elders and all those things, you know, had to be, had to be grown. Yeah, and you know, we had maybe about 700 people thinking we couldn't uh, survive uh, anymore on that small five acre campus. So we knew we either had to move the whole thing or start a new church and, and divide the church into two different community churches. And we decided to move the whole church and they found property. An interesting thing about this story is that, that God's in control and not us. Is that I thought about a man who owned Challenger Park and that's where we are right now. That was the, the community. And so I called him up and I said, Don, uh, do you have any land out in the Parker area? He said, yes, I've got 15 acres. And uh, so we negotiated. And so the, where this building is setting, the building that we're in right now, is on that 15 acres. It felt like home and also just there was something very unique and special that you could feel when you were here that was so different from the other churches. It never was boring. It was always, you know, encouraging and life-changing. And that's what Jesus calls us to be, to encourage others and to help change others' lives. Something so special here because with all that's gone on, good, bad, or indifferent, um, I just feel like Southeast had favor from God so much. Um, I've seen him work in incredible, miraculous ways, and I continue to see it and hear it and feel it, that he is right here walking with us through everything. I'm thankful to God for the fact that I could be a part of this wonderful congregation, Southeast Christian Church. Yes. We are so thankful that um, we have been able to stay here and continue to serve and worship with this church. And it's been, it's been uh, of the biggest blessing I can even imagine. So we thank you for allowing us to do that. I think the next step is to do our best to live out uh, First Chronicles, be more of a house of prayer, to, to press into worship and, and explore that more, to be a place that invites the presence of God more and more so that He can show up and, and do His work in, in our world, which so desperately needs that today. Yeah.